It's time for the Stock Car Show on the Performance Motorsports Network. Powered by the staff at Race Chaser Online. Your motorsports, your way, every day. And now, here's your host, Tom Baker. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Stock Car Show. We are coming to you live from the Race of the USA Race Chaser Studios in Mooresville, North Carolina. My name is Tom Baker. Seated next to me at the table is Jacob Seelman from Speed Sport. Hi. And behind the proverbial glass over there in the tech shed are Chris Murdoch and Randy Miller, both uh, punching various buttons to keep us on the air, both in audio and video form, as we are live on our Race Chaser Media Facebook page, as well as being live on the Performance Motorsports Network for the audio feed. So um, if you're listening to us live, it would have to be on one of those two sources. Or if you're listening to us via on demand, well, we have many different sources you can do that uh, through. So just uh, go to your favorite podcast source, check Race Chaser Radio, and we should be there. Welcome to the show. We are going to be busy this evening. A couple of special guests will be joining us after a little while. We've got uh, USAC Shamrock Classic winner, Cannon McIntosh. Who thought he was just supposed to be on right now. I told him, good for you. You're at least ahead of schedule, Cannon. He, I don't he normally, forgot to set his yeah. clock ahead. I, I, don't, I, I don't normally punch buttons on my phone during the show, but that I, I couldn't pass that up. That was actually really funny just now. So Cannon going to be joining us after a little while here. Uh, you were at the Shamrock Classic, Jacob, and we'll get your thoughts on that as we go through the program. Absolutely. And we'll also have Brandon Pearson and Brandon picked up the win in the late model version or late model um, stock car version. late model stock car race portion is the word portion. I wanted there you go. of the cars tour race over the weekend which at Southern National which Chris Murdoch was at and Chris will be joining us yes. a little later and and I just want to say right off the that. bat I was impressed surprised all of the above at the performance by Brandon Pierce that his name was not on my radar going into that event. So I was really pleased to see somebody that I didn't expect come out of that opener with a victory. I mean, on the super late model side, Bubba Pollard doing Bubba Pollard things. He waxed but, the field. I mean, for, for Brandon Pierce, much like Cannon McIntosh, I feel like there's big stories in both yeah. of those names picking up victories this weekend and excited to talk about that as the show goes on. Yeah, today. yeah, it should be fun. should be a good show. And, of course, uh, a lot happened on the national scene as well. Um, things did. starting to just take off in uh, the motorsport season here. Once you once you get to Daytona, it just seems like it's it, progressively it it gets busier. From there, we had an ARCA race on Friday night or Saturday, Saturday night, night. One yep. of the nights in Pensacola. And, um, yeah, and uh, it was an interesting race to say the least. Venturing it Motorsports was. walking out with a victory, shocking. Isn't it? No, not. Okay, let no, me rephrase my that. It's not shocking that Venturini Motorsports won a race. I would argue it, it is shocking that they won this particular race. I don't know. I, I'll be honest. Uh, to me, I, I mean, I think Michael Self is a championship contender. I, he I, is, I but, he, but as Michael proclaims, he sucks on short tracks. Well, uh, not anymore. Apparently, he used to did. He used to did. Yeah, now he doesn't. And uh, picked up the win. Ty Gibbs finishing up in second. Again. In that one. Again. Yeah. yeah. He was second so. in his K&N debut. Now yeah. he's second in his ARCA debut. Yep. So uh, good run for him. We'll uh, talk about that later on as well. But, you know, again, you start off looking at the news wire and um, what's in the news. Well, we had NASCAR at Phoenix over the weekend, and Kyle Busch is in the news because he's now Shocking. one win away from 200. As Nick Bromberg said on social media, what a time to be alive. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, here's the thing for me with this. I, you know, I'm not, I have a ton of respect for Kyle Busch, um, and sometimes I think he's really funny and entertaining, and sometimes you just want to, you know, swat him with a big stick. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's the way he likes it. <laughs> I think he likes that sort of um, back and forth that, that uh, he generates. I think he knows what he's doing. Yep. But I don't care how you feel about Kyle Busch. 
Um, and I don't even care how you feel about Kyle Busch running in the uh, the lower series. And I've Correct. certainly spoken my piece on that. Hello, Chris. Hello. Um, 200 wins across the board is, is a pretty big deal. damn good. Yes. I mean, I, I, you just you can't take that away. From no, you I, can't. I hate that he's. Um, I, I hate that he's allowed to run in the lower series, and not just him, but any any cup regular with a win. Um, to me, once you win in cup, you're done. But, um, again, you can't take away the accomplishment, Chris. No. No, you can't. And if you're Kyle Busch, you're just happy to get to next weekend and hopefully pick up a win in the Xfinity series so you don't have to answer the same question well, exactly. for the next four weeks. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So he here's the deal for me. I'm going to bring Randy in on this if, if you'd like to. Um, Kyle's 33. He's got probably 10 years if he wants to you run. You took where I was going with you know, this. You know, he's got 10 <laughs> years left. How the heck many wins is he going to have in the next 10 years? You know, if he continues to win the way he wins right now, I could easily see that reaching a 500 mark. I really can't. Uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, it's possible. Uh, unless he decides to stop racing wins. Xfinity and, and trucks, but I mean. Okay. I see, that's yeah. the, the whole thing is, is he's not going to get, you got to remember that for a good majority of those 10 years, right. he had pretty much unfettered access. Right, exactly. Yes. So, you know, it's, so it's not going to be fast. Three to four, maybe. But yeah. I, Five might be no, no. I think four is even stretching it. But I believe that I, I believe three to four. The mar I believe three hundred three hundred NASCAR National Series wins. I believe is very attainable for Kyle with what time he has ahead of him. Four hundred. You know, again, he's closing in on two hundred right now, and he's been in the sport for fifteen years already. You've got less than half of that likely to go. Chris, so I don't see 400 being re I don't think he doubles the number, but I say somewhere in the realm of 300 to 325 is very fathomable for, for what Kyle is, is capable of and what he's been doing recently. So that goes into my next question, and I'll ask Jacob because he's the stat boy. Do you think Kyle can hit his mark that he set for himself in the, in the post-race of Let's go Sunday. around the table on that. Start Do with you Jacob. think he can get to 100? Cup Series wins? 100 yes. Cup wins. Absolutely. And I'll just add a short bullet to why I believe that. I believe on the Cup side, he's just now coming into his prime. That eight-win season he had a year ago, I think you're going to see more of that from Kyle Busch going forward. I, b I believe 100 wins is feasible, if not perhaps a shot at Pearson's 105. Randy Miller, you buying or selling that? You know, I, I'm, I can buy it, but the reason why I say that is because if you hear every post-race interview that he does, he always, like, the, the whoever's interviewing him always talks about, you know, the, the record books and, the, and everything, and he, he always plays it off like he doesn't care. He cares. Deep down. Of course he cares. You know, somewhere in his mind, that 100, you know, win mark is something that, you know, everybody would achieve to be, and, and Gordon's come the closest at, what, 93? So he, he, mm -hmm. he's, he's well aware of the record. He's, he's going for that record. He just doesn't want to tell you that. Oh, I, I, and I agree with that. I buy, I'm buying that all day. He's easily, I think he easily gets to 100. In fact, I think he passes David Pearson wow. before he retires. Yeah, I, I just, uh, again, I, I think uh, Jacob hit it spot on. In terms of the Cup Series, he's just pe he's now just starting to peak. I mm -hmm. think he's got three to four more, five more years where he could have as good a season as he had last year or better. And you start looking at that, and if, if he wins eight to ten eight races. to ten races a year for the next that's you know four or five years, that's there's your, four, there yeah. it is. That's forty to fifty, which would put you somewhere between ninety two and a hundred and two right there. Yeah. And then so. if you tail off and still pick up a few more beyond that, like say what Jeff Gordon did, right. then you're beyond one oh five. Yeah. I also wouldn't be surprised to see him get up above maybe three or four more championships before he's done either. Well, championships are harder to win because obviously with this current system, you, you can win eight races. You have to be good at Homestead. But yeah. you, right, you, you have to be good in the last 10 races and you, you have to be good at Homestead and you have to win or, you know, beat your other three opponents. He's made it there a lot. He's yeah, just only I mean, got one to show it's, for it. Yeah, it's, and that's the thing. Like I said, it's just a, it's a tough – winning a championship is a lot tougher right now in this scenario than it was, you know, in, than it has been in any other scenario that NASCAR's 
had either previous to the playoffs or during the playoffs, in my opinion, because, again, it all comes down to one race. So you mm -hmm. can win 15 races in the regular season, but you get to the playoffs and get knocked out by some, you know, somebody else's mistake or whatever, mm -hmm. or you get to Homestead, you and still got to beat the other. Th yeah. yeah. So, um, you know, people say, well, I don't like this format. It isn't the same as it used to be. I agree with that. I like it, though, because I think it's a lot harder. you got to be agree. good the whole season. You, you really can't do. coast your way through you, the season. No, you really do. And races. I'm going to double check this during the break, but I'm not sure there's been a, a, a season yet to date where Kyle would have actually won the championship under the old format, the points yeah. through 36 races yeah. format. I'll check on that during the break. Yeah. Okay, we'll, uh, we'll take a break, actually. And uh, when we come back, we are going to have – more conversation here. We've got a couple of upcoming guests, so we're just getting started here on the Stock Car Show. Tell all your friends to tune us in. We're live on a, our Race Chaser Media Facebook page. Also on PMN Radio, if you just want to listen, download the PMN Radio app. And, of course, our show being brought to you by HMS Motorsports. The leaders, HMS Motorsport, I should say. The leaders in motorsports safety. You can find them on the web at hmsmotorsport.com. We'll be right back. You own a performance car and you know how to drive, but you want to learn real performance driving. Well, Bunky, get that car off the street and onto the track. Summit Point Motorsports Park, the Mid-Atlantic's premier road racing facility, located just over an hour from D.C. in nearby Summit Point, West Virginia, is the place to go. And you'll find that Friday at the track is going to give you what you need. For less than a monthly car payment, you can attend this regularly scheduled one-day instructional event in your street car on one of Summit Point's three world-class road racing circuits. You'll receive classroom instruction, skid pad instruction in their cars, including front and rear skid control, and four 20-minute in-your-car instructional sessions from a professional instructor. Have fun, go fast, and really learn how to drive. Call 304-725-8444 for class schedules and details. That's 304-725-8444. Friday at the track at Summit Point Motorsports Park. Green light. Hey, girl. School zone. I'm getting hungry. Car changing lanes. You want to meet me for pizza? Stop sign. Intersection clear. Yeah, street. Pizza sounds good. Ball in street? Girl in street! <gasps> it's hard to concentrate on two things at once, like texting and driving. Stop the text. Stop the wrecks. How will you stop texting and driving? Tell us at stoptextstoprex.org. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Here's an important message from Rad and this station. Hi, this is Bob Sheehan from Blues Traveler for Rad, recording artists against drunk driving. I like to party just as much as the next guy, maybe even more. But the one thing I won't do after I've had a few is get in the car and drive. Don't blow it. Always choose a designated driver. Remember, music lives and so should you. Automotive technicians and auto service trainees, how would you like to work at the beach and perform for one of the best car care centers in the nation? Lewis Meineke is now looking for skilled automotive technicians to join their award-winning team. If you're a gearhead that knows his or her stuff or a young up-and-comer that has the motivation and drive to succeed, then you need to make this call today. 302-827-2054. Lewis Meineke Car Care Center, located in beautiful Lewis, Delaware, offers a highly competitive compensation plan, great benefits, a flexible schedule, and did we mention that you're going to be working at the beach? Plus, there's a signing bonus for the right candidates. Technicians must be ASE certified and have a minimum of six years experience. Beginners advance at your own pace in one of several entry-level positions. But whatever you do, don't wait. These jobs will go fast. Call Tim at 302-827-2054. That's 302-827-2054. Lewis Meineke Car Care Center. Rev up your career. Hi, I'm Todd Gillant, and you're listening to Race Talk on PMN, the Performance Motorsports Network. Techno Todd there. Welcome back I to like the Stock that. Car Show. Techno Todd. <laughs> Stock Car Show presented by HMS Motorsport, the leaders in motorsports safety. You can find them on the web at hmsmotorsport.com. And we are back now as we continue with the show. Tom Baker, Jacob Seelman, Randy Miller, Chris Murdoch, 
And talking NASCAR for just a minute, we've got uh, some USAC conversation coming up, some Cars Tour yep. conversation and IndyCar conversation ahead as well. But NASCAR was at ISM over the weekend, Jacob. And ism. Yeah, ism. Kyle Busch did Kyle Busch things, but yeah, there were plenty of other stories to me to focus on other than Kyle Busch in these two races. Let's start with yesterday since it's – the most recent of the two. Oh, sorry. Yesterday I was too busy uh, doing my best imitation of a broom and Kyle was sweeping. Yeah, well, but again, he wasn't the only story. I mean, I thought... He was the biggest story. Well, <coughs> excuse me. I'm not so sure he was the biggest... Well, yeah, okay, because he won and he dominated and he swept, he's the biggest story. He was the most but prominent story. To me, story. I think there were some stories that we could talk about performances that I thought were worthy of uh, of note. And one of them I thought was actually Clint Boyer. Um, oh, on the cup side? Yeah, on the cup. Well, that's what I'm saying, the cup race. Yeah. Um, I thought Clint did a really nice job. And actually, it felt to me a little bit like there was a point in the race where he had what it took to win. It just didn't last. No, and, it didn't. I, and you know what? In fairness... 11th really was not representative of how well he ran for most of the day. Now, in fairness, I think probably the funniest part of the entire Clint Boyer day might have been, <laughs> might have been the discussion between he oh and his goodness. spotter, Brett Griffin, about how in the Sam heck they got a porta potty up on top of the spotter stand. If you are going to tune in to one driver's radio during a NASCAR race, you could do no better than Clint Boyer. Amen. Because he's doing, he, he's the master of multitasking uh -huh. because he's driving a race car and doing a comedy show at the same time every Sunday. <laughs> unbelievable. Always. I mean, yes. just, just unbelievable. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That was a really interesting it, it, uh, that, it was, moment. It was his hysterical and i i really feel bad for clint that he didn't end up with a top 10 because i felt I like that too. team really deserved one for how well they ran most of the day now there was another storyline that stuck out to me that did not have to do with a specific driver tom as much as it did the fact that you can still pass people this week at phoenix why I circle two names in particular. One of them we just talked about, Clint Boyer. The other one was a driver who ran through the field from 31st to come home 6th in the Big Mac Mobile. Kyle, uh, Kyle Larson did a heck of a job coming through the way he did. Yeah. And really, this to me speaks now to the fact that, yet again, Chip Ganassi Racing is proving that they're here and as far as I'm concerned, they have got the Chevy Camaro ZL1 locked, loaded, figured out. And right now, CGR, in my opinion, is unequivocally the best Chevrolet team in the Cup Series this year, at least through the first four races. They've been on it. Well, I, yeah, I mean, they have. But y you've got to give at least a little bit of a call to RCR. They haven't. You know, Austin Dillon ran up in the top five to top ten in the, for a lot of that race. Um, you know, and it just, they aren't finishing well. I mean, he finished 21st. Um, you know, see Hemrick if I can was find 18th. Hemrick. He was 18th. Yeah. You know, I, I just feel like this is one of those situations where the the Chevys as a whole are not very good. But Larson and Bush, you're right, CGR are the two that have overall performed the best. Mm -hmm. And I thought Kurt really did a nice job as well, finishing seventh right behind his teammate. Jimmy Johnson ran about as well as we've seen him run in terms of positioning right. throughout a race in a long time. He came home eighth, but he was higher than that for a good bit. He really was. He, but, was, he did well. You know, I, I mean, overall, the Chevys are just, to me, they're just not there yet when you no, get off not. the plate tracks. I, I, I would agree with that. Now, um, overall, I mean, I, I don't, I'm not just looking at ISM Raceway. I'm kind of looking at the overall picture now that we're four races into this. There have been a couple of things that have really 
impressed me so far, and I think w uh, one of them, and we saw it in play again at one of his best tracks, is the continued resurgence of Denny Hamlin, who yeah. won the Daytona 500. He ran solidly at Atlanta and Vegas, and now we come to Phoenix, a place where he's had tremendous amount of success over the course of his career. He comes out, runs in the top five all day, finishes fifth. He's you know, got an average finish of sixth through the first four races. This is, uh, this is a Denny Hamlin that easily appears to be fight, you know, doing his part to fight for his life at Joe Gibbs Racing right now. He's up there you know, in contention, fourth in points, and his qualifying's been spot on. He's, he's looked like a completely different driver so far this year. Two words. Chris Gabehart. I like that, too. I think, uh, you know, I mean, I, I, Denny and Mike Wheeler were good together, but I think Chris Gabehart has unlocked a different part of Denny Hamlin, maybe, that Wheeler couldn't always get to. Because I feel like Hamlin and Gabehart being short track guys speak the same well, language. Well, and see, that's – and I don't – this is nothing against wheels because, I, you know, I think I think he's a great crew chief. And I, I think if Matt DiBenedetto can ever have some luck go his way, I think you'll start seeing that, that 95 team creep up the board too. But I, I think that what Gabehart's done with Hamlin this year – and, of course, when you win the Daytona 500, it's pretty easy uh -huh. to, to have a, a good early season surge, too. But I, I, the Toyotas as a whole are, you know, pretty much the story here. I mean, yes, Penske's won a couple of races, and, yes, Ryan Blaney finished second and should have, I would argue, probably had a, a, a solid chance to win yesterday. So certainly that team's Fords are strong but to me right now, Toyota is the story across mm -hmm. both Xfinity and the Cup Series. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, a lot of Bush the, and Hamlin. I was going to say, a, a lot is, of that is you know, due to Kyle Busch. Yeah. But, you know. The interesting thing is when you look at the standings, you, you, you see Kyle Busch at the top. And then you see Joey Logano and Kevin Harvick. But here's the, then it's Hamlin and Truex. Mm -hmm. But when NASCAR's got this thing now called a projected playoffs uh, type deal here, and if you look at that, they, the number one ranked is Kyle, number two ranked is Logano, but then it's Hamlin, and then Harvick, and then it is Keselowski, um, who's way down in eighth in the points. It's it's just kind of interesting well, so to the, see how they're computing well, that overall no, it, compared so, to. So okay, so let let me be clear. Based on it's stage not, points it's, and all that. It's not. So let me be clear what you're reading, Tom. That's that's not necessarily they they're calling it projected playoffs, but basically the way that the way that's working right now is. If the playoffs started today right. with what's happened, this but, that's what it doesn't in, it doesn't add or compute any. It's additional just interesting points. to see the difference right. in the actual points right. versus what they're they're showing in the playoffs. Right. Because well, stop and it, yeah, and stop and consider how important that you know that wins are that playoff well, points are you know Keselowski and stage has, points right and sta and stage points basically because Keselowski has not um, accrued very many stage right. points this year but because he has that win on, in the bank it catapults him up the playoff stand yeah and you know it's got Kyle Busch number one right now with I think 2022 yeah. points, and that would be including the 15 bonus points he would get for being the regular season champion right. if the playoffs started today. Right. Obviously, we've got 22 more races to compute before we get to that point. To but me, you're right. It is a very interesting story. If you're looking at a big three right now, it's interesting, Randy, because if you look at the standings, it's Bush, Logano, and Harvick, but I would argue that at this moment, you, you, you could put Hamlin in there, and you could also put Martin Truex in there and take Harvick out. So, you, you know, your big three is kind of debatable at this point if there is such a thing. It's almost a big four, I, I feel was like at, right Well, now. last year, Joey Logano said it was the big three in me, didn't he? Yeah. That's true. That's true. And any time the driver starts out the season doing, you know, knocking off top fives and top tens, you have to think they're a threat to win Yeah. every yeah. single week. But my – my thought process here is who at Fox decided this was a great idea to hire somebody to sit there and calculate stuff that doesn't even matter right now? 
Like, I mean, as far as like the projected, you know. Well, that's on the. I'm looking at NASCAR. NASCAR, now, whoever Fox, it was, somebody has way too much time on their hands. Well, they're just to calculate what might happen. Yeah, the they're, they're, it's anyway. basically as Jacob said, it's a running tally. Of, right. Of, yeah. It, it's not necessarily. I get it. Yeah. But it doesn't make any sense. I mean, well, it makes sense, but it doesn't make sense. It's it, it's just interesting to look at after four races versus the regular standings and see the difference because what it shows you is that while Keselowski has won a race, you know, his performances in the other three haven't averaged out as well as some of the other guys who haven't even won yet, like Truex. So it's kind of interesting. To, of who's lucky and who's good. Right. Well, and, and, yeah. I'm, and I'm going to add yeah. to that point, like you said, like you referenced a minute ago, Tom, you know, Keselowski has not uh, take gotten very many stage points yet this year, but that's because with the win at Atlanta, he and Paul Wolf the last two weeks, I feel, well, this past weekend was a little bit different because they had the uh, the failure and hit the wall. Yeah. But in Vegas, they gambled a little bit on a little bit different strategy to try and go after another yeah. win, and that took them out of the running for some stage points. So the fact that Brad's in eighth, I think, also has a lot to do with the DNF, uh, well, not DNF, but the, uh, the poor result. The poor result that he got over the weekend yeah. at ISM a after they hit the wall. Yeah. I, I really don't feel like eighth is representative of how well he's run this year. I mean, and, and his average finish is still 8.5. I mean, he's not been terrible. Well, yeah. I mean, you know, he had a, he broke a sway bar is By what happened. By Henry standards, so, yeah. terrible though. Yeah, well, yeah. And I mean, look at, looking at, Looking at at uh, the Hendrick again, the the whole Hendrick team still. I mean, yes, Jimmy Johnson ran much better, but mm -hmm. the whole Hendrick team, by and large, just uh, is still not performing very well in in no, the races. Not, not at all. It's really unbelievable. Um, okay, we'll uh, step aside for a moment. When we come back, we've got more conversation. Xfinity. We've got IndyCar. We've got all kinds of stuff. A couple of special guests coming up after a while. Brandon Pierce going to join us. Not this next segment, but the segment after that. We'll be back with more of the Stock Car Show presented by HMS Motorsport, the leaders in motorsport safety, right after this. Do you love the sound of high revving motors and the smell of burning rubber? Do you want to get your car sideways right at the ragged edge of control? If you've always wanted to try drifting or learn to improve your drifting skills, Summit Point Motorsports Park, the Mid-Atlantic's premier motorsports facility, has the expert instructors and the specialized track to teach you how to drift and the skills necessary to drift competitively. From skid pad to open sessions, Summit Point Motorsports Park has the safe and open environment that allows drifters of all skill levels new to intermediate to get sideways and smoking. With a focus on safety and the skill set necessary to drift competitively, Summit Point Motorsports Park's Drift Nirvana is just the thing for you. Call for your reservation today, 304-725-8444. Or for more information, go online, summitpoint-raceway.com, or you can email them at office at bsrinc.com. Drift Nirvana, getting you sideways the right way. HMS Motorsport is the leader in motorsport safety. HMS serves the majority of Monster Energy NASCAR Cup, Xfinity, Camping World Truck, IndyCar, and IMSA WeatherTech teams, as well as countless SCCA and club-level racers and driving enthusiasts throughout North America. Featuring world-renowned brands like Schubert Helmets, Schroep Belts, Adidas Suits and Shoes, Lifeline Fire Systems, and even Racecom Radio Kits, HMS has the right product for your type of racing and your budget. Their representatives are experts on only one thing, making your track driving as safe as possible. With locations in Mooresville, North Carolina and Danvers, Massachusetts, the HMS staff is always ready to take the time to help you find the right product for your safety needs. Don't settle for second when it comes to motorsport safety. Stop in to HMS Motorsport. Visit them on their website at hmsmotorsport.com or send them a message on Facebook and tell them the folks from PMN Radio sent you. What an awesome game. What's up with your car? I don't know. It won't start. How are we getting home? Chill. My parents signed me up for the roadside assistance from Lewis Meineke. It was free with my oil change. They'd come and get the car started or get us home and tow the car to the shop. Good to know. With my driving, my parents never know what to expect. When you join the Meineke Car Care Club with a $35 preferred service, you get four free months of roadside assistance, including tire change, battery jump, lockout service, towing, and more. Contact Lewis Meineke, located on Route 1, or call 827-2054. 
When do you think of a plumber? Like most people, even if it's an emergency, you can be confident about who will arrive to help you. For quality and reliability, count on someone you can trust. Call on the plumbing services of Hague Quality Water of Maryland. Plumbing doesn't have to be an emergency. We handle all kinds of preventative maintenance, too. Hague Quality Water of Maryland is family-owned here in Annapolis since 1993. For a refreshing choice, call us at 888-84-WATER or visit us online. COPD, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, is a lung disease that robs people of their ability to breathe. As many as 24 million Americans suffer from COPD, also known as chronic bronchitis or emphysema, and half of them don't know they have the disease. If you or someone you love is over 35 and has smoked more than 100 cigarettes in their lifetime, visit driveforcopd.org and take the screener, then take that to your doctor. I'm Jeff Stoltz, and I drive for COPD. Hi, this is Austin Terrio, and you're listening to Race Talk on the Performance Motorsports Network. Now back to the show. Welcome back to the Stock Car Show, presented by HMS Motorsport, the leaders in motorsports safety. You can find them on the web at hmsmotorsport.com. And we also want to give a shout-out to all of our friends at strutmasters.com, the suspension experts for being a part of the Race Chaser family as well. Chip Lofton and his staff have been just great to us. And I uh, really appreciate that. And we'll talk about my computer career as well a little bit later on. Right now, Chris Murdoch rejoining us. Tom Baker, Jacob Seelman, Randy Miller behind the glass doing the audio production and co-hosting as well. And we're going to uh, push off the Xfinity conversation for a little while. And Hang instead, on, why are you raising your hands, son? I, I have, I this have a This is not point. class. <laughs> it feels like class. I'm at a desk or You're table dismissed. or something. <laughs> Three days detention. <laughs> anyway, I, I, I noticed a tiny point before we transition point? over to late model stuff. Okay. Yes. yes. So in the, in the weekly battle of bacon. Bacon? We love yes. bacon. Bacon. We love bacon. In the weekly battle of bacon, which was legitimate this time. Smithfield. because uh, Because... The uh, bacon scheme was on Ryan Newman's Roush Fenway Racing Ford over the weekend. Uh, Smithfield bacon is still supreme because Eric yeah. Almer. Now, in fairness, you could argue that Ryan Newman put up a serious fight because yes, I don't think did. 12th was rep. He was in the top five in the last stage of that race. But yeah. uh, Eric Almarola coming home with a fourth place finish after leading 26 Oops. laps. That team's going to have something to say later on this season as well. It, yeah. That was a great result for Eric, it's and I think it was promising for Ryan as well, but Smithfield Bacon still wins. It's interesting to see Ryan Newman in the six car up towards the front. It is. Years, I like it. After the years they've had passed. I like it. I don't know if that's a, a, a Matt Kenseth thing or a package no, thing. or a, a Scott mix, Graves or, or thing or and a the package mixture, thing, Or I a think. mixture of both. Or? I think it's a combination of Scott Graves and the package. I yeah. don't think – that you can assign too much of what's going on specifically to anything in the past. We've changed the package and we brought in Scott Graves, so it's a different situation over there on the six team now. And I'm sure that team is being run and being managed in a much more performance-oriented way. Um, so it's great to see Ryan having some success there. He is it currently is. one spot out of the playoffs after four races not i think that, that make matters, it in this but year. uh i really do well um yeah he should i mean if he keeps running like he's running now and again the package is going to scramble things here mm -hmm. um i think it makes a big difference you see guys running in the top 10 and even up at the top five in some cases that you're yeah. not used to seeing and i've enjoyed some of that i think that's been by and large very good but anyways let's uh let's transition over to uh, the Cars Kaz. Tour, because, um, yeah, if you're in Boston, it's Kaz. Um, we'll trans over, transition over to the Kaz Tour. Kaz? And, um, yeah, we Kaz. Had, we had him on If you're in Boston, yeah, it's, it's, it's Kaz. And uh, you park your car in the, in the driveway. As, ben, um, as Bentley says. <laughs> many other of my New England friends, anyway. Um, Chris, you were there. Brandon Pierce, new ride, new team, and newfound success yeah. in the opener. It's it's interesting to see him come into a driver that I knew knew he could be because he had he'd showed some of that last year when I 
got the chance to go to a few Cars Tour races. But to see him work with Lee Pulliam and to see them, you know, put their minds together, their their speed was incredible. They were yeah. up towards the top five the entire night. And for him to go in there on the last lap like he did and just move Josh Berry up the track just enough just to get to the Root inside. Gouge. Going through, because uh, Josh Berry looked like the car to beat. Um, but but a late race caution by Ronald Hill, who ran out of gas with about five to go, kind of stacked everybody back uh -huh. up and gave Brandon Pierce the run he needed to make that move. And he put the pressure on Josh, and I think Josh was not expecting that in the last couple laps. So Brandon was able to get under him going into turn one on the final lap, and the rest was history. So that was good. Um, a couple more storylines, you know, seeing – Deke McCaskill. Deke McCaskill was sort of another favorite to Josh Berry yeah. going into that race. And well, Deke McCaskill's a favorite in any race he enters. Yes, and and to see him not up there with Pierce or 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 Berry was kind of interesting. He was still up there, but he just wasn't a part of that whole mix. And I think that was interesting to me, and it'll be interesting to see moving on to Hickory how that'll play into everything. Hickory's a whole different track. I mean, you know, when you when you come out of the shop basically onto the racetrack for the first time some guys just hit it off the bat and some guys don't brandon obviously did you would expect it from josh um you know i think deke will 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 be there when it comes to hickory it, it's hickory is a completely different southern nationals a really fast banked you know balls to the wall kind of track the banking and is hickory is not the banking in, is insane at southern national oh it is when yeah. i got there because that was my first time going this past weekend and when you know you pull onto the track and you're going down to park into pit road to unload all my gear i was just up against the door yeah just sideways and i was like oh let me get down on the air <laughs> <laughs> like, let's not do that so yeah it's it's interesting because southern national when when if you're watching from the infield and say you're you're in the infield and you're you're really close to the back straight and you're watching them it almost feels like they're going up a hill coming out of turn two but it's just the banking kind of playing tricks on you but the, it is a very fast racetrack and a great place for a, a touring series to open the season um good for brandon pierce getting the win he's going to be joining us in our next segment well, um i want to add something to that go ahead too. <clears throat> Excuse me. Try not to and get all choked up when you do it. Well, unintentional side effect there. Um, looking at the <laughs> results here, I have to say I'm very impressed. I mean, and not just impressed, but optimistic, Chris. I would never have thought 28 late model stock cars would show up for the season opener. That, to me, and when you look down the list, Barry, McCaskill, McCarty, Riley Herbst, in a car, kind of surprises me, but I'm impressed. Riggs, Drew Do both Drew Dollar and Taylor Gray had yeah, solid they did, debuts. They, did, they had some great speed. Those DGR cars unloaded fast at Southern National, and they weren't afraid to put the bumper to the rest no. of the traffic. Um, Myatt Snyder, Slayer of Taxes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Slayer of Taxes. Uh, Tommy Lemons, <laughs> Bradley McCaskill, um, my gosh, I mean, it, was, it wasn't just 28 cars. It was a 28-car, good, strong field of late-model stock cars and you is gotta, what sticks you gotta out you got to think, me. you know, driving that 18, you mentioned you were surprised to see a Riley Herbst. They were the reason why Pierce had to move over yeah. to, mm -hmm. uh, to Lee Pulliam Racing. Right. Because now with their partnership with Toyota, mm -hmm. you're going to have – Ty Gibbs, Riley Herbst, and a few other and Nelson at yes. the, in the Nelson cars, yeah. Yes, in the Nelson cars, you're going to have them be kind of a rotating cast of drivers yeah, yeah. through that 18 car, which should put some good talent. We talked about how good of a run Ty Gibbs has been on, and the, his yeah. other three debuts getting back in the late model might be good for him to I, get oh back I at agree. Hickory uh, next, yeah. the, the next car race, I, I, which I think is next weekend, isn't it? Or no, two, it's weeks. two weeks. Two weeks. Yeah. I was close. Hickory's opener is next weekend, right. but the That's cars right. tour is okay. there in two weeks. Yes. Same weekend as Martinsville Cup. Yep. So the, the good news, it was on both sides here because not only was it a very strong field for late model stock cars, but the super field too, even though, yes, Bubba Pollard won. Shocking, I know. Bubba Pollard just but didn't win. He was out. 
<laughs> 27 supers is the best field I've seen for a super late model race outside of the Winchester 400 and the Snowball Derby. You know, it, it in in a while. It's the best field for a regular touring series race outside of Winchester, Pensacola, or maybe Bristol, as I've seen in quite some time. And that's got to be encouraging, doesn't it, Chris? For for at least where we're you're starting off the season, you hope you can hold on to this momentum and keep it going. I mean, I imagine Chris Regal, Jack McNally, this this was good. Well, well, they started off strong, and that's what you want with a, with a season opener. The racing was incredible. It was, you know, the the late model stock race was on the edge of your seat the last few laps, yeah. just watching Brandon get down to Josh, and then seeing the cautions kind of playing the factor in the super race when Preston Peltier was able to get out front of Bubba Pollard for a few mm -hmm. laps. You you were you were watching to see um, to see if uh, he was going to keep and hold off Bubba Pollard. Uh, and I do want to make sort of a quick note because people have been mentioning it on social media. During the Super Race, we had an accident, and I do want to say we're offering our players, our, our prayers to Brandon Willard, the flagman of the Cars Tour, who is yeah, recuperating now that. at home. He, he's doing fine, according to good. his dad, Danny, and uh, we hope to see him back at a track soon. Well, yeah, that's good. I, yeah, I heard about that. That's yeah. one of those where you just, you know, you sit back and you're thankful that it's not – not worse than what it was, exactly. but just, mm -hmm. you know, one of those truly bizarre occurrences, I would say. Just a, an episode, if you will, yes. uh, yep. medical situation. But uh, Brandon is planning on being back on top of the flag stand at Hickory in two weeks, which we're really happy about. Okay, so we're going to step aside. When we come back, the winner of the aforementioned Cars Tour race, Brandon Pierce, will be joining us. You're listening to the Stock Car Show. Presented by HMS Motorsport, the leaders in motorsport safety, and we will be right back. Everywhere you go, you hear it, and you see it. It's coming at you through your phone, your tablet, and your computer. It's broadcast from your favorite radio station, TV networks, and cable companies. It's in the stadiums, the arenas, the ballparks. It screams for your attention at the mall. It's interactive on Main Street. It's even coming at you from the gas pump at the nearby convenience store. What is it? It's digital content. It's digital content. It's digital content. Somebody has to create it. Somebody has to manage it. So whether your dream is to write it, design it, create it, call it, produce it, voice it, host it, light it, shoot it, switch it, record it, color correct it, edit it, code it, repurpose it, tweet it, blog it, post it, compress it, upload it, replay it, or make sure it gets to where it's got to go when it's got to get there in the format it's got to be in. You need to attend Carolina School of Broadcasting. The skills you will learn, the experience you will get, and the connections you will make at Carolina School of Broadcasting will open the doors to the career you want in digital content creation and digital content management. Call or come by today. Click csbradiotv.edu. Parents, your son or daughter has had their license for a while now, but you want to make sure they're prepared for any situation they may face on the road. High school driver's ed doesn't teach them to drive defensively. They need to be prepared for any highway emergency. For less than a month's insurance, and a whole lot less, BSR instructors at Summit Point Motorsports Park in nearby Summit Point, West Virginia, will teach your son or daughter how to respond instantly and positively to unexpected situations on the road. BSR's specialized accident avoidance training teaches swerve to avoid maneuvers at highway speed. Ocular drive Driving, which focuses driving attention on ways to avoid accidents, vehicle dynamics and feedback, skid control and skid recovery, threshold braking on straights and progressive braking on curves and off-road recovery techniques. This is stuff driver's ed simply doesn't teach. So call BSR today, 304-725-8444. Give your kid the skill set needed to drive safely and responsibly on the highway. That's 304-725-8444. This is a test to find out if you know it all when it comes to children. Name one of the leading killers of U.S. children age 1 to 13. What's the best way to protect children in a car crash? At what age and size should a child start using a booster seat? Don't assume you know it all when it comes to car seats for your child. Go to safercar.gov slash the right seat and know for sure. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Hi, I'm Zane Smith, and you're listening to Race Talk on the Performance Motorsports Network. Now back to the show. Welcome back to the Stock Car Show presented by HMS Motorsport. The leaders in motorsport safety, you can find them on the web at 
hmsmotorsport.com. We continue to talk cars tour and we welcome the winner of Saturday afternoon's late model portion, late model stock portion, if you will, of the um, Cars Tour event. Brandon Pierce to the show, I think for the first time, and uh, good to have Brandon here. Congratulations, my friend, on a great run. What a way to start the season with a new team. Yeah, thank you guys for having me. I really appreciate it. Uh, excited to be on, and uh, it was a great way to start off the year, and uh, still all kind of sinking in it's been pretty surreal but um very blessed and uh you know uh it was just a really great weekend all around for all of us yeah brandon i i kind of want to know what the, the transition has been like with uh you know switching over to the podium you know when we talked at the track last year you were with the nelson guys what what has the transition been like you know working with lee and getting to, to know all the guys over there and start to drive for them yeah, the transition has been really well. Um, I, I guess one of the best ways maybe to uh, to try to uh, characterize it has just been fast. You know, I had to really try to adapt very quickly because, of course, we were trying to, you know, merge a gap, um, you know, of, of chemistry in a, in a pretty short amount of time. So um, a lot has happened in three months, um, but it's all been positive, and uh, it's been really fun uh, getting to work with the guys up there and, and everybody involved is such a great uh, group that's just one big family and uh, you know uh, they've, they've taught me so much and um, I've been a lot more hands-on and, and learning about the car and um, you know what each change does and stuff like that so um, you know it's just it's been as much of a educational experience for me and learning as it has been uh, you know being able to improve as a driver as well. For those who are not familiar with you in our audience uh, give a little bit of your background for us. Yeah, so uh, I'm 23 years old and uh, out of Oak Ridge, North Carolina. This is my fourth full-time season in a full-body stock car. Um, prior to that, I, I just raced uh, dirt go-karts. So oh. um, I came straight out of that. You know, wow. Into my first year with Nelson Motorsports at, um, at South Austin that first year and ran the first two full seasons there. And then, of course, last year was my first time on the, uh, the Cars Tour as a member of the Tour in 12 um, and then, you know, as you guys just stated, uh, switch teams over the off season. Uh, it was an opportunity that was uh, way too good to pass up, and so I'm in my fourth full year now, uh, and just moved over to Lee Pulliam. And uh, as you guys said, we started off the year with a win, so uh, it's been a great start. Brandon, would you say that the transition to Lee Pulliam performance has been about as smooth as you could have hoped for, given, um, you know, given the way the situation changed for you? Um, yeah, but I, I would say that kind of kind of lightly and just in the way of, of how that could be perceived. You know, um, you know, I don't want it to, to go unnoticed that it's been a lot of hard work uh, put in by a lot of people, um, like I said, in a very short amount of time. And, um, you know, I, I went, went to work on myself as well, uh, even harder, um, you know, physically and mentally and just studying. And, and as I said, you know, uh, learning how to work on the cars, being in the shop, being involved. Um, you know, being as close as, and building that chemistry as I could with those guys, and uh, you know, it it was a brand new car uh, that we uh, we debuted this past weekend, and um, you know, it, like I said, it, it's been a lot of a lot of thrashing and a lot of long hours and sleepless nights uh, leading into this past weekend, and um, so it was just very gratifying for all the hard work and, and effort that was put in to to go out and qualify on the pole, and then uh, lead a couple laps there at the beginning, and then end up sealing the deal at the end. Well, well let's let's talk about the race because you unloaded very fast at Southern national, you know, you started on the pole and, and were able to keep it up front. And, and I think that was interesting to a lot of people because I think like Jacob said earlier, you weren't on a lot of people's radars going into this race. Is that kind of how you like to keep it? Just stay on un, under the radar and, and, and show up like that. Uh, yeah. And I guess it's just because maybe I've become accustomed to it. Um, you know, I, I hadn't, a lot of good runs last year um and just you know bad luck or a late race incident or something you know it just always seemed like something happened you know no matter what the situation was that you know ended up plaguing finishes all year long so uh you know we we came into the weekend and we had a game plan we stuck to it um all weekend long you know we uh we never really went for speed um until the end of uh, the only practice that we got on Saturday and uh, felt really good going into qualifying. And for the first round, you know, we just kind of went out and was trying to put down a lap that, that would get us in the top eight. 
Um, you know, I left a little bit out there and, and ended up still being P1 for the first round. And so then, of course, you know, round two, we went for it and, and was able to get the poles. So, uh, you know, we just, it, it's Southern National. I ran the Thanksgiving Classic down there in, in November of last year. And the track uh, lost so much grip um, between, you know, November and the harsh winter and, and all the rain and everything. It was just a completely different racetrack. And so, um, you know, we stuck to our guns of saving tires because we felt like that's what was best and got the car, um, you know, we worked on race runs all weekend long and got the car handling good on tires as, you know, they would wear. And uh, it ended up really being beneficial for us and paying off um, when I decided to go. And, you know, we had saved enough tire to be able to make a charge at Josh there at the end and uh, was able to seal it uh, right there on the last lap. So thanks, Chris, for, for throwing me under the bus a little bit there. I want to I wanna make it clear that it's not that Brandon wasn't on my radar at all. Just knowing, I, I think, the, the how stacked the field was, he wouldn't have been among the first two or three names that I might have picked. But I would argue, Brandon, that to go out against the field that you did and win this race has to make it feel even a little extra special knowing the amount of competition that you had to beat to win that deal yeah absolutely uh you know i definitely would agree with that statement you know i've got so much respect for um for all you know everybody that i race with and especially guys on the, on the car store you know you look at guys deke mccaskill um you know of course lee before this year you know taking a mm -hmm. step back to to team up with me and and uh you know, solely work on work with me. Um, you know, obviously Josh and um, you know, it's just there's so much talent on the tour. Bobby McCarty, you know, there's just oh yeah, there's so much talent there, and 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 so every single week, you know, when the green flag drops at a car store race, you know, I feel like there's easily ten or twelve guys that can win, especially this year. And, and as you said, the the field at Southern National this past weekend, you know, there's there's ten to fifteen really good cars there, and so um, you know, I just think it was kind of gonna depend on who played their strategy right and, and luck fall their way some and, and um, you know luckily for us it did but uh, you know for myself going into the weekend I, I had picked uh, the 88 and um, the, you know Deke and Josh to um, to be the two on, on my radar for who I really was trying to pay attention to and so um, you know, spent a lot of time analyzing them when I wasn't in the car and, and seeing how their cars were handling and what they were working on and uh you know, obviously, as everybody saw, you know, they ended up being right up there towards the front. We all were right there around each other, all races long. And, um, you know, they're the last 50 laps. It was us three in the top three, and that's what it came down to. Did you have the move on the last lap? Did you have that planned out if you were in position, or was that uh, kind of a in-the-moment split-second call to, to be able to make the move the way you did? Yeah, so... I made a mistake with three to go, and, and I hadn't drove uh, my corners any differently than I had those, you know, you know, previous seven um, after we got that green flag for that last restart. And, um, you know, I, going back and looking at the video that got posted up um, late yesterday after noon, you know, I rolled into Josh's back bumper in three and four the lap before and got pretty close. And so then, of course, with three to go, I got in there and, and um, you know, ended up giving him a pretty good shot. And, um you know, I was just rolling the center so much better than he was and rolled right in there and, and got into him. And, uh, you know, I backed off because I didn't want to win it that way and wanted to let him gather it up and, and get back going again. And so, um, you know, doing that, I actually thought I had cost myself the race, but, you know, I wasn't going to dump him for the win and didn't want to get around him by jacking him up. So um, I didn't actually think I was going to get back to him. Um, and then I could see I was going to get a little bit of a run, and I could, you know, he had been – pushing up off the bottom both ends but a lot more on one and two than three and four so uh, when i crossed for the you know when we crossed there for the white i knew if i was going to make a move my best chance was going to be in one and two because he was struggling more down there than he was at three and four and so uh, when i saw the day like there i just you know was able to get enough of a run and get back in the gas to to get my right front uh in there and, and just shove him up enough to get alongside of him and then i knew from there it was still going to be a drag race back to the line um and of course, you know, he got on the binders there and tucked in behind me and uh, went to go return the favor as, as he should. And uh, luckily for me, he came up just a little short, but it was a heck of a race. Again, I got all the respect in the world for Josh and, and, and everybody involved over there at Junior Motorsports. They're, you know, a heck of a group of competitors. And, uh, you know, I expect many more battles with them and, and as well as everybody else uh, for the rest of this year. 
if you're just joining us, we're talking with Brandon Pierce, the winner of the late model stock portion of the Cars Tour doubleheader over the weekend at Southern National Motorsports Park down here in Kennelly, North Carolina. Brandon, uh, we go from Southern National to Hickory, which, you know, we were talking about this in our last segment before we brought you on the difference in the two tracks. You got Southern National, a big, fast bank track kind of balls to the wall, and then you go to Hickory, and it's a late apex, shorter, more challenging drivers kind of track. Um, from your perspective, talk a little bit about that. And, um, you know, I think that's one of the things that makes the Cars Tour such a challenge around here is there are so many different um, types of racetracks that you run. Yeah, absolutely. And so for myself, um, <clears throat> Hickory has, has kind of been um, has been my Achilles heel. It is not my best racetrack. Um, I like the racetrack. Uh, it's just not been all that kind to me. Um, I've only ran there twice, and it was the two times with the Cars Tour last year. Um, it's just a very unique racetrack. You know, um, looking at it, you wouldn't think um, that it's all that technical, but just from the surface to, as you said, you know, the way the corners are and just um, the way you have to drive it, um, you know, it's, it's a very technical racetrack. Um, and, you know, not as bad as Southern National, but you, you also have to save tires there because if you're too aggressive with the throttle there, you'll, you will burn the tires up there as fast as you can at any other abrasive racetrack. So um, it's a very momentum-based racetrack. Um, you've got to have um you know good drive but you've also got to have the front working for you as well to try to keep the back under you so um you know look at josh i mean the guy's phenomenal there um he'll be very strong i expect and um you know bobby won there last year so he'll be strong as well um lane ran really good there in the throwback as well as deke last year so i expect all of them to be strong um you know for me it's definitely a track this year i have circled on the schedule that i need to be better at um, you know, and I've I've went to work on on being able to do that, and and hopefully we'll be able to to have a strong finish there as well, um, because it you know we go there twice, so it's it's a very important to to have good finishes there, and um, you know a bad finish can definitely um, derail your season um, even this early. So just got to go in there and stay out of trouble. Hopefully qualify well and uh, stay towards the front and make a charge at the end. So last question, uh, Brandon, before we let you go uh, you talked earlier about lee taking a step back and uh, putting the focus on you coming over there this year is this a situation where you hope to see him back in a car and be able to have a chance to race against him again sooner rather than later even though now you're teamed up with him and then uh, also want to give you a chance to to uh, shout out to any sponsors and supporters on the side of your race car that help make it possible for you yeah absolutely so you know the first part of that question uh always had all the respect in the world i think as anybody has for lee poem you know um he's a, a four-time national champion as everybody knows and uh he's every definition of what a short track racer is and uh, just have a lot of respect for him and so for me you know now you put the personal side of it of, of being able to drive for him and and that's special within itself so um I actually will get to race with him sooner rather than later. Or I guess I should say against him sooner rather than later. Um, Lee's going to run the the big thirty thousand to win uh, cars tour race in Orange County, oh, okay. uh, first of April. So I'll get to go against him then. Um, and then um, I'm not. He's not a hundred percent committed to his schedule yet of, of what else he's going to do. Um, he did uh, post on Facebook today. Uh, of course, as I already knew, but uh, you can see him this weekend. He'll run at uh, South Boston for their opening race this year. Um, I won't be racing, but I will be there, um, you know, helping out the guys and working on the car. So, um, but he's going to run. I do know he's going to run uh, Orange County, and then of course uh, everybody can expect to see him at Martinsville, I'm sure. So, um, but yeah, really looking forward to to racing against the the boss man. Um, it, it'll be fun, but uh, you know, I know he'll. He'll want me to approach it no different than than any other time. You know, when I was racing against him, uh, when I wasn't driving for him, you know, he'll want me to give it all I got. Of course, we're not going to do anything to take each other out, but we'll race each other hard and clean. And, uh, you know, if I can't win, of course, I, I want the boss man to win. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, real quick, give us, uh, give us your uh, sponsors and shout-outs to where you need to. Who helps you make it happen? Yeah, so got to thank Fremont Properties. 
uh, Discount Oil Company, Amonzi Marble Granite and Tile, Bondar Brothers Distillery, Mincy's Graphics, Thunder Road Harley Davidson, Grand Atlantic Resort, and again, everybody uh, associated with Lee Poyan Performance, as well as Kowalski Racing Engines, E Box Springs, Ernest Performance. Hitchcock Racing Enterprises for a great chassis, and Tony Hancock for an awesome drive line. Uh, without all those people, none of this would be possible. Really blessed to get a win to start off the year and get my first career Cars Tour victory, and for you guys to have me on, and uh, hopefully we'll have one or two more, and uh, you guys can have me on again. I really appreciate exactly. it. Exactly. Well, that's uh, what we're looking forward to, Brandon. Uh, we definitely we try our best to get the uh, the Cars winner on each following show as much as uh it is possible with everybody's schedules so uh look forward to doing that again because that means you will want another one so good luck the rest of the way brandon and thanks for taking the time absolutely thank you guys and one more thing of course because uh i'm big on that as well as lee is you know family so i uh, gotta thank my family without them it wouldn't be as you know possible and uh just really appreciate them allowing me to do what i love and chase a dream and uh thank you guys again for having me you got it that's brandon pierce we're gonna step aside when we come back more conversation we got indycar to talk about we got xfinity to talk about we got all kinds of things actually left to talk about if we can squeeze enough time in and of course uh canon mcintosh coming up uh in just a little while as well to talk usac shamrock classic we'll be back with more of the stock car show presented by hms motorsport the leaders in motorsport safety right after this you own a performance car and you know how to drive, but you want to learn real performance driving. Well, Bunky, get that car off the street and onto the track. Summit Point Motorsports Park, the Mid-Atlantic's premier road racing facility, located just over an hour from D.C. in nearby Summit Point, West Virginia, is the place to go. And you'll find that Friday at the track is going to give you what you need. For less than a monthly car payment, you can attend this regularly scheduled one-day instructional event in your street car on one of Summit Point's three world-class road racing circuits. You'll receive classroom instruction, skid pad instruction in their cars, including front and rear skid control, and four 20-minute in-your-car instructional sessions from a professional instructor. Have fun, go fast, and really learn how to drive. Call 304-725-8444 for class schedules and details. That's 304-725-8444. Friday at the track at Summit Point Motorsports Park. Is your job sucking the life out of you? Wake up. You can do something else. Information technology. I know what you're thinking, but I'm not a math and science person. No problem and no excuses. Because it's not rocket science. It's my computer career. Go to mycomputercareer.edu and take the free career evaluation today. You can start your new life as an IT pro in as little as four months. Mycomputercareer.edu. That's mycomputercareer.edu. The Performance Motorsports Network is a compilation of shows about motorsports. From technical to controversial to just fun, everything you like about racing and gearhead stuff is right here on one internet channel. The Performance Motorsports Network. Tell your friends about it. Hi, I'm Reed Sorensen. Racing has been a part of me and my family for as long as I can remember. I had to make tough choices early on to get to the top. It took hard work and dedication, but it's those tough choices that helped me prepare for challenges I would face as a cup driver. Make the right choices today and be ready for the challenges tomorrow. This message is brought to you by the U.S. Air Force. Hi, I'm Timmy Salamito, and you're listening to Race Talk on the Performance Motorsports Network. Now back to the show. Welcome back to the Stock Car Show presented by HMS Motorsport, the leaders in motorsports safety. You can find them on the web at HMSMotorsport.com, and you should, by golly. Yes. If you need anything in the realm of driver safety or radios or any kind of a racing-related safety product, padding, um, any types of, of driver's apparel, suit shoes, uh, of course, head and neck restraints, all those things, um, they have them all at Do hmsmotorsport.com. So go yes. to the web, type in HMS Motorsport, no S, hmsmotorsport.com. Do it. And Do it now. Check out what they have. Um, welcome back to the Stock Car Show. As I said a yeah, moment ago, say, Jacob Seelman <laughs> is alongside me uh, in the Race Chaser studio here in Mooresville. And uh, over on the other side of the glass in the next room is uh, both Randy Miller 
and Chris Murdoch, yeah, who Chris are capably handling production. Well, Chris is multitasking as co-host and video producer, and the video stuff is in the tech shed, so he's yes. got to be running back and forth a little bit. But um, got an opportunity here to take some time before we go to Canon Macintosh in the next segment to talk about the USAC Shamrock Classic. We'll get to that in a minute. But I do want to talk real quick about uh, the Xfinity Series event that took place on Saturday and just kind of get that off the plate. It, it really, there's, again, <laughs> Kyle Busch is the story, but um, I feel like there are a couple of guys in that series that are showing themselves to be players for the championship. Yeah. That I might not have expected. So I, I, I want to make this. Sh ju I, I want to tie this into a bow quick, Tom, because we only have seven minutes yes, in I this know. segment. Um, but here's my player that I don't know. He's a championship guy, but he's certainly a guy who is going to have an effect. And that guy's Ryan Sieg. He's not going to be a championship. That was my first winner, one. But and by golly. What that 39 team has done this year is nothing short of remarkable. Three top tens in the first four races. He currently sits in the top ten in points for the, fir for the first time since 2016. And stop and consider this, Tom. He currently has more top tens, or as many, sorry, as many top tens in the first four races of the year as any other season in his Xfinity Series career, when he finished ninth in points a few years ago, he had three top tens. He already has three top tens. Yeah. New motors from ECR, new cars from Richard Childress Racing, and a new crew chief in Shane Huffman have brought new life into that team. That team's going to be a player. I, I believe, quite frankly, that Austin Sindrick even though, okay, it's not a shock to see the 22 team contending. Well, see, okay, we can talk yeah, about Austin. But because Austin as a driver, I think, is not somebody I would have thought is contending for the championship this year. But see, well, I, really? I, I, I didn't believe it. I, I did not believe in him going into the year. I'm surprised to hear that. See, I, I think that Ryan Sieg has to be – uh, mentioned which yes. you did and I think the yes. other one for me who hasn't had necessarily the flashy result yet but he's coming is John Hunter Nemechek for GMS Racing. I agree with that. I think GMS has come into their own this year quite frankly and John you know I, I believed in John Hunter because of, of his course. playoff time in the truck series. It was just for me it was a question of how quickly he would adapt to the Xfinity car compared to the truck. He's yep. done very well. Another solid top 10 run to start off the season in ninth. He started 13th and came forward, and yep. he currently sits seventh in the standings, but he's one of only a handful of drivers that's finished in the top 10 three times in the first four races, and that to me says a lot. And I agree. Th Michael, don't, don't count out Michael Annette either. He's got the best average finish of any Xfinity Series regular this season. Well, I guess at this point i'm looking at michael and and going i expect him okay to be fair yeah i think he's crossed that threshold now all right okay fair so so i just want to close that by yes. saying kyle bush 199 he gets yep. 200 at california in the xfinity race on saturday just saying okay let's transition over to usac open wheel midgets because I love indoor racing, and there were a couple of indoor shows over the weekend, but we're only going to have time in this segment yes. to get to the USAC show. Um, and you were there. I was. And two of the top young rising stars uh -huh. contending for the win at the end of that one. My gosh, this was beautiful. Um, for starters, Cannon McIntosh winning his first USAC race was a big deal. However, Cannon McIntosh winning his first USAC race – in the manner that he did it was unreal to witness. The kid and the car both were on fire literally during hot laps. And there was a time when Cannon's father, Dave, looked at me in the pit area and said, I really think we're going to pack the car up and go home. And Cannon looked at his dad and said, no, we're not. I want to race. Wow. 
Okay. Th this coming from a 16-year-old whose legs, ankles, and driver's suit were on fire during hot laps. And he looks at his dad and goes, I want to race. Well, it was a good decision to race because he went out, went from 7th to 3rd in his heat, went from, I think, fifth to second in his qualifier, was high point man for the night, turned down the pot of gold challenge to go to the back and try for 50 grand to start on the pole and converts his pole starting spot into a win after battles with both Logan Seavey and a hard charging Zeb Wise in the final laps. And I know you were referencing... I, I'm assuming his battle with CB yeah. there. With, no, with with. Uh, oh, with with you. You were referencing Zeb at the Zeb, end. Then? Yes. Yeah. Zeb -wise, yeah. Yeah. Zeb because Zeb ran second up until yeah. the last lap yeah. when Chad Boat got around him. A pair of 16-year-olds going at it. But uh, CV in the middle of the race looked like the Logan CV that won the championship last year. And to me, that was a big storyline of this race. Is that. Slowly but surely, Keith Coons Motorsports is starting to look like Keith Coons Motorsports again, even though they only have one Shocking. top five finish to show for it in the first three races of the season. They started to have some speed again, and I think there's a lot to be said for that. But this, ra this race was about the teenagers. Zeb had a great showing, bouncing back from missing the feature at DuCoin in December to finish third this weekend. It was a big confidence builder for him. For Cannon to do what he did, that my I, I I said it over the weekend and I'll say it again. The kid had ice in his veins the remainder of the night, and I don't I don't just say that figuratively because of the fire and what happened. He was so calm under pressure and so calm under circumstances that I feel like would have easily rattled some of the most experienced veterans in the sport. To do what he did, I mean, there was not a soul in the pit area, I don't think, that came down to con that that didn't come down to congratulate him after that performance. It was truly impressive, and I'm looking forward for him to tell the story in the next segment because if you haven't heard it or read about it or seen the video, y you're not going to want to miss this. Trust me. Hashtag real racer. We're going to talk to Ken and McIntosh. In our next segment, right around the turn, you're listening to the Stock Car Show presented by HMS Motorsport, the leaders in motorsport safety. We will be right back. How to be a great dad in 15 seconds. Bike ride, go fish, walk in the park, phone call, milkshake, play catch, picnic, fly a kite, tell jokes, laugh, talk, read a story, tell a story, bumper car, swing set, bowling, pillow fight, cut loose, stay tight. Whew. Because the smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. Call 877-4DAD-411 or visit fatherhood.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. Automotive technicians and auto service trainees, how would you like to work at the beach and perform for one of the best car care centers in the nation? Lewis Meineke is now looking for skilled automotive technicians to join their award-winning team. If you're a gearhead that knows his or her stuff or a young up-and-comer that has the motivation and drive to succeed, then you need to make this call today, 302-827-2054. Lewis Meineke Car Care Center, located in beautiful Lewis, Delaware, offers a highly competitive compensation plan, great benefits, a flexible schedule, and did we mention that you're going to be working at the beach? Plus, there's a signing bonus for the right candidates. Technicians must be ASE certified and have a minimum of six years' experience. Beginners advance at your own pace, Ian one of several entry-level positions. But whatever you do, don't wait. These jobs will go fast. Call Tim at 302-827-2054. That's 302-827-2054. Lewis Meineke Car Care Center. Rev up your career. Do you hear that? That's the sound of America's only sports car. That's right. It's a Corvette. But not just any Corvette. It's your Corvette. It's that who cares if there's traffic part of your day. And this could be you when you come to Cooper Corvettes. With 60 years of Corvettes to choose from, there's always a Corvette in your budget. And they'll service any Corvette you bring in. Cooper Corvettes. On Route 1 just north of Quantico in Triangle. Call, click, or visit coopercorvettes.com. 
how to deal with someone who says that's so gay. Outsmart them. This party is, like, so gay. Totally. Excuse me, but did you ladies know the word gay used to mean happy or excited? Then it became a word used to describe gay people. Then somehow it came to mean dumb or stupid, which is how you just used it, which is not very nice. Ew, that guy is on the football team and super smart, and he totally hates us now. Totally. When you say that's so gay, do you realize what you say? Knock it off. Learn more at thinkbeforeyouspeak.com. This is Anthony Alfredo, and you're listening to the Performance Motorsports Network. Now back to the show. Welcome back to the Stock Car Show as we continue with our numero dos here uh, on the Performance Motorsports Network and also on Facebook Live. And uh, we are uh, talking with Canon McIntosh, the winner of of the USAC Shamrock Classic at DuCoin over the weekend, where our um, cohort in crime here, Jacob Seelman, was. And uh, Cannon, first of all, welcome back to the show. It is great to have you back on. Second of all, congratulations on a combination of courage, stubbornness, and just pure freaking talent. Yeah, thank you. It's it's good to be on the show with you guys. Well, it's uh, it's good to have you back. Um, we were we were talking a little bit in the last segment about your evening, afternoon, and evening, and um, you you started out on fire, literally, and ended in victory lane. I mean, that's uh, one of those roller coaster nights that you hope you don't have too many of in a career because nobody wants to be on fire. But um, that's why I said a combination of uh, courage and stubbornness uh to keep going and not just pack it in and just plain talent to uh come out and do what you did performance wise and get the victory yeah it's uh definitely not where we expected we'd be you know catching on fire in hot laps and uh bouncing back to be high point man just having everything dialed in and everything as good as we had it to uh to be able to come out and uh, win the Shamrock Classic. It was a, uh, it was pretty eventful night, but it was a uh, one to remember. That's for sure. So you and I, Cannon, were talking about this early in the day, um, not too long after you got the car back together on Saturday. But for those who who may not have been watching on Flow Racing or heard or seen just how all this went down, um, talk a little bit, if you could, just what you were experiencing what happened during hot laps and i know you've talked at at length that there was no thought of packing it in at least in your mind even though even though your dad uh, your dad wanted to pack up the car and go home but just you know take us back and just you know help help everybody to understand what you were going through in the in, in the moments right there in hot laps when all this was going on uh yeah um it was definitely a really scary moment. That's for sure. I've never, I've never been in a situation where I was that, you know, freaking out that much and panicking because, you know, when the flame got to my face, kind of, it, it really, uh, I really started to freak out and I couldn't get my belt undone. And, you know, the, the crew, the crew at the track was really, really good to get there and put the fire out fast. And I had just minor burns on my ankle, which is really good for i mean i was in the the fire for a little bit of time you know safety safety equipment was really good with simpson suits and um but yeah after after the fire we we really didn't know how the car was or what we were going to do but you know we got cody took it back to the trailer and he started working on it and paramedics were checking me out and i ran back to the trailer and put grady chandler's suit on and we got the car back going and we made it out to heat one it was funny because i i had walked back to the pit to your pit area even before you or the car had gotten all the way back there and grady was already looking at everybody and i remember you, you walked up grady looked at you and he literally said go get my suit go shoe get it and, and and there there was no hesitation there was no uh, n- nothing it was just you know we're going to keep racing i mean where did that 
strength of spirit come from or was it just one of those moments where once you realize the car's back together it's okay let's go I think it's just the fire that was all in us we had the adrenaline going and we we, we saw the speed we felt the speed in hot laps and we, we know we had something going in from the good run we had at the chili bowl and we just changed shock packages to sure bill fks and so we knew we knew we were going to have a good car and we didn't want to just sit out just because of a little fire that didn't really tear anything up so we just we we went uh in attack mode and got everything fixed and you know it was it was definitely worth it the turning point of the entire night i don't even think was the fact that you went seventh to third and fifth to second between heat and qualifiers but it was the moment when Blake Anderson standing with you on the front stretch and asks you if you're going to take the pot of gold challenge and I had already talked to your dad and he goes I left it up to him but he's like I'm going to slap him if he takes if he drops to the back and you looked at Blake and said winning the race is the payoff and it was but I would I would argue and I think you would agree that was the moment when I think when, when everybody believed, okay, now 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 he's got a shot at this. Yeah, uh, I mean, fifty grand—that's a lot of money. You could do a lot, especially when you got a shop and race cars in it. You can you can get a lot of things with it. But I I was telling everybody that I was going to take it all like all week. I was like, oh, I'm for sure taking it if I get the chance. I, I didn't think I was going to be top four point guy at all going in. I mean, I, I was just hoping we could make the show and be a contender. And when I got up there, just, uh, you know, everything kind of changed. The, the pressure was on. There was lots of adrenaline going. And when uh, Lauren Stewart started talking to me, she's like, she's like, you know, if you want to do it, do it. But I mean, you could be on the front row. You could win your first USAC show. And I thought about it a little bit, and I just, I figured, you know, we could be on the front row and maybe go out there and win this deal. That that track's really small. It's hard to hard to get around and avoid wrecks, not get lapped when you're starting that far back with how hammered down and heavy the track is at the start. So. I think it was just the best option to start on the front row. Yeah, there was a uh, there's an old promoter's trick, and that you'll learn after a while. The reason they put all that bonus money up if you go all the way to the back is because they figure you will never win it. Uh, you know that's so it, they they make it so the odds are really stacked against you. I think you made the right choice there. Just take the win and and uh, move forward, especially after the way your day started. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people, the fans see 50 grand and everything, so they they, want, they all want to go out there and see it happen. Someone come from the back. Sure. In reality, m most of us drivers pretty much know on a track like that, it, it's just it's not it's not a high possibility. No. Maybe somewhere else a bigger track where it's more racy and right. it widens out more, but a place like that, I mean, 10 laps in, we were already at Colton Cottle going to lap him and he's the one who took the challenge and he pulled in about halfway through because he knew it just it was it was over at that point so i know today was wash day as you posted on social media and i, I i'm gonna circle back to what the emotions have been in a minute i, I want to kind of let you close with that when we get there but i know today was wash day for for the two cars which is also new for you it's the first weekend that you guys have run two cars out of your dad's shop but are, are you in are you back in the shop already tonight despite the whole you know i was on fire saturday thing oh yeah i mean we we were on fire. We won, but no matter what, it's still it's a weekday. We're back in business, getting the cars back ready. You know, getting them apart, make sure everything's good, go through everything, and just no matter uh, what the results are, we're in the shop the next week, just making sure, just getting things done. Okay, so going forward from here, uh, what are your plans for 2019? Where can fans find you and uh, watch you race we're going to be running the full power Eye national tour uh hopefully we're, we're going to run for the championship there and maybe hopefully grab a championship on the year and 
we're going to run a few USAC national shows. Uh, we'll probably hit five or six of those, and we'll run a few ASCS uh, wing stuff. But mainly, uh, you got uh, everyone can catch me at Power Eye National events. Well, you definitely, I mean, it's got to feel good to be basically a family team running against some of the best in the business, and you go out in a race like the Shamrock Classic and get it done. Yeah, it's cool to be able to go out against guys like or team owners like Keith Coons and, and Chad Bow and just Petrie, all those, Eric Klaus and all those guys that are established teams who've been around and know what they're doing and have so many cars and good drivers behind them. And it's just it's cool to be able to be a team that just was put together about two years ago and just got there and show everyone that that uh, local teams can still get it done. And just as long as you have the just the push and the drive to get it done and work hard at it. And, I'm, you know, I'm blessed to have a dad to work very hard to, you know, provide me with a good race car to hang with all those guys and it's just it's pretty awesome you're tired aren't you cannon i mean i mean the the events of of everything saturday they don't call it the 24 hours of decoin for nothing (laughs) i mean i i know that you guys got back you know in the wee hours of sunday morning and it's been you know crazy since since then it it, it, is it all starting to hit you like uh (laughs) okay we're a little worn out for a day or so here i mean you are only 16. yeah it's it's a little i mean it's it's quite a bit but it's I, i think it's cool just to have so many people like just gaining followers and just seeing the people that are supporting me and just the, just the cool shout outs you find but I get I mean I've gotten a few I've gotten a shout out from Bell Yaley Casey Kane and there's there's just a lot of people out there that I just never even thought were watching and you just never know whose eyes are on you and just who could be watching you and it, it's just special to be able to to have all these people around me and I'm not overwhelmed yet you know I'm I'm still just taking it in and enjoying the moment who were you most who reached out to you that you were most surprised by um i I really don't know i think i'd say kenny wallace you know just seeing him there's plenty of people but i just didn't you know i didn't think he'd be watching or i mean bell was the most special one i think because He's sure. from Oklahoma and made it out made it out of the same town, and I think he's the most special one because he's representing just where he came from, and he's not forgetting the the people who supported him. So now I'll ask you what I said I was going to ask earlier. I mean, what as it's slowly starting to sink in? Hey, we actually did this. I mean, what what emotions have you been feeling over the past? 24, 36 hours, you know, since standing on the front stretch and us talking Saturday night when you literally could, you know, couldn't describe what you were feeling in that moment. You know, what, what's what been going through your mind and what have you been feeling now since, you know, being able to start letting it sink in? Uh, I think it's mainly just being proud of the team. Like, I am just really excited for the whole team itself that, uh, just knowing that we we can go out there and perform against all those teams and it's uh, it's a huge confidence booster that's for sure because I mean now I know that we we can win a USAC national show and I know it's just one win but it's it gives us confidence going into every race that we we uh, have a shot and we can we we can get it done. Well, one win is basically like a golden ticket on American Idol, bud. You got to, you now, never again will you ever have to say, I think I can, because you did. So congratulations, Cannon, once again, and uh, thanks for taking some time to be on with us. We look forward to catching up with you some more as the season progresses, and hopefully you get a few more checkered flags. Yeah, thank you. That's Ken and McIntosh. We step aside. We'll be back with more of the Stock Car Show presented by HMS Motorsport, the leaders in motorsport safety right after this. 
Parents, your son or daughter has had their license for a while now, but you want to make sure they're prepared for any situation they may face on the road. High school driver's ed doesn't teach them to drive defensively. They need to be prepared for any highway emergency. For less than a month's insurance, and a whole lot less, BSR instructors at Summit Point Motorsports Park in nearby Summit Point, West Virginia, will teach your son or daughter how to respond instantly and positively to unexpected situations on the road. BSR's specialized accident avoidance training teaches swerve to avoid maneuvers at highway speeds, ocular driving, which focuses driving attention on ways to avoid accidents, vehicle dynamics and feedback, skid control, and skid recovery, threshold braking on straights and progressive braking on curves and off-road recovery techniques. This is stuff driver's ed simply doesn't teach. So call BSR today, 304-725-8444. Give your kid the skill set needed to drive safely and responsibly on the highway. That's 304-725-8444. You hear that? That's the sound of America's only sports car. That's right. It's a Corvette. But not just any Corvette. It's your Corvette. It's that who cares if there's traffic part of your day. And this can be you when you come to Cooper Corvettes. With 60 years of Corvettes to choose from, there's always a Corvette in your budget. And they'll service any Corvette you bring in. Cooper Corvettes. On Route 1 just north of Quantico and Triangle. Call, click, or visit coopercorvettes.com. HMS Motorsport is the leader in motorsport safety. HMS serves the majority of Monster Energy NASCAR Cup, Xfinity, Camping World Truck, IndyCar, and IMSA WeatherTech teams, as well as countless SCCA and club-level racers and driving enthusiasts throughout North America. Featuring world-renowned brands like Schubert Helmets, Schroep Belts, Adidas Suits and Shoes, Lifeline Fire Systems, and even Racecom Radio Kits, HMS has the right product for your type of racing and your budget. Their representatives are experts on only one thing, making your track driving as safe as possible. With locations in Mooresville, North Carolina and Danvers, Massachusetts, the HMS staff is always ready to take the time to help you find the right product for your safety needs. Don't settle for second when it comes to motorsport safety. Stop in to HMS Motorsport. Visit them on their website at hmsmotorsport.com or send them a message on Facebook and tell them the folks from PMN Radio sent you. Hi, this is John Andrasik of Five for Fighting, here for RAD, the entertainment industry's voice for road safety. You know, style is a personal thing, and your lifestyle is your business. But if you take it on the road, it becomes everybody's business. So please, plan ahead, designate before you celebrate. Friends, don't let friends drive drunk. A public service announcement brought to you by RAD, the National Association of Broadcasters, and the Ad Council. Hi, I'm Cole Custer, and you're listening to the Performance Motorsports Network, the voice of motorsports. Welcome back to the Stock Car Show, presented by HMS Motorsport, the leaders in motorsport safety. You can find them on the web at hmsmotorsport.com and also want to let you know that if you are looking for a change of career, if you're thinking about doing something different, well, I've got an idea for you. How about IT? How about a career in cybersecurity or some other IT-type position? Here's all it takes. MyComputerCareer.edu can get you to IT professional status in as little as four months. They have seven campuses across the country, or you can uh, study online and do it that way. Two to three times a week is all it takes. Two to three days a week doesn't have to be a full-time seven-day-a-week venture for you. You can uh, do it at your own pace, but in as little as four months, you can be an IT professional. If you're not great at math and science, doesn't matter. It's not rocket science. It's my computer career. And here's some more good news for you. They have financial aid available if you qualify, including the GI Bill. And they work with hundreds of employers to try to help get you placed when you are ready. So check them out. My computer career. .edu, training for a better life. There's a free career evaluation. You can take it, think about it. If you decide to take that step, you couldn't do it with a better group of people. MyComputerCareer.edu. And as we talk about computers, we talk about technology, and technology is all about IndyCar. At least uh, when I look at the steering wheels these drivers have, it's like a little computer in there. Um, Joseph Newgarden, really not a shocker um, to win at St. Pete, at least not in my book, 
But to me, the show belonged to another young man who was running in his first race for Chip Ganassi Racing. And first IndyCar race, period. Yeah, and I got to tell you, I was not expecting the performance that we got out of Felix Rosenquist over the weekend. He led 31 laps. He only finished fourth. I say only. Still a great debut. But he, to me, was the show at uh, St. Pete over the weekend. A great opening statement from him going into the season. So now you understand why I've been saying for the past three months, keep an eye on Felix Rosenquist because people were not believing that he was more than capable of going out and and showing the world that he's going to be a contender. This is a driver who has driven in 10 different national and international racing series so far in his career at the professional level and had success in nearly every single one of them. He was a star in Formula E. He was a star in Indy Lights. I believe he's going to be a star in the IndyCar series. I mean, you, you look at, at maybe, the, maybe the sheets on paper aren't as quite impressive in Formula E, but he had speed in every race he was in. He spent some time in the IMSA WeatherTech Sports Car Championship and run very well. He's you know a former winner of the Macau Grand Prix. He's done it all around the world, and now he comes back to open wheel, open cockpit formula cars where he's been so strong. Yep. And this, to me, was exactly what Felix Rosenquist ought to do and exactly what Chip Ganassi Racing hired him to do and exactly what I believed he was capable of doing. I was not at all surprised to see him go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Will Power, not flinch, and have a shot to win this race. I would argue he's even more talented and in even a better position coming into IndyCar racing than Robert Wickens was a year ago when he came into IndyCar racing. And we all know what Wickens did when he came in. He you know, contended for a couple of wins last year. Felix Rosenquist isn't just going to contend for wins. He's going to win, and he's going to be a title contender. And as I said, I, I believe on this show when we were previewing the IndyCar season, Scott Dixon is at his best when he has a teammate that pushes him to another level. He's not had that since Dario Franchitti. I believe Felix Rosenquist can give Dixon the challenge that Franchitti did when he was at CGR, and I believe you're going to see Scott Dixon come out and perform at another level this year just as much as you see Felix Rosenquist contend for victories. Well, and, and I think it's redemption for Chip Ganassi. Absolutely. Because I, I think I, I said he made a huge mistake with Ed Jones, and, and I think now we see uh, the, the difference here in, in Ed um, didn't have a good day on, on uh, Sunday either, uh, ending up in the wall. But I, I believe that Rosenquist and Dixon are, are the 2019 version of Robbie Wickens and, and his good buddy, Mayor Hinchtown. Yes. Um, well, and I'll tell you, James Hinchcliffe had a good comeback to start the year in St. did too. Yes, he did. And so when you look at – but when you look at Rosenquist – if he can keep the momentum going, I think, you know, that's going to be the key. It was interesting because he had very, he's had very little experience with live pit stops. Mm -hmm. He's a, you know, this is the biggest stage I would argue that he's really ever been on. Um, and he said, this was, you know, one of the hardest, this is one of the hardest cars to drive. This yes. is not easy doing this. He was flat worn out, um, yeah. after that race. And so, um, as he grows into his feet, so to speak, in IndyCar, it's going to be interesting because it, it certainly appears that he has the chance to be yeah. one of the best um, going. And, and, and uh, I was impressed. And I, I, you know, I understand your enthusiasm now because mm -hmm. he, he really didn't make a mistake all day long. It was a very impressive. No, he him. didn't. And in fact, truthfully, I believe he had the race winning car. It was only due to grit 
and a brilliantly called strategy from Tim Sindrick that Joseph Newgarden leapfrogged everybody and ended up winning this race. Yeah. Uh, that middle stint where he stayed out four or five laps longer than the rest of the field and put in qualifying laps to build enough of a gap to come out and hold off Scott Dixon, hold off Will Power, hold off Rosenquist. That was the mark of a championship team. And, and f uh, by the way, I say this jokingly, but uh, for, for Tim Sindrick to come right off a hip replacement and uh, come right on to a race-winning strategy call in the opening race at St. Petersburg <laughs> may, makes, makes you jokingly wonder if they didn't just do some work on Tim's hip to make him a little bit uh, more mentally proficient, if you will. Well, I'm not sure how a hip replacement makes you more mentally proficient, but if you oh oh no, I I was joking that maybe they didn't just work on his hip. Oh, that I got went. You. Okay. Hey, uh, you 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 gave me a joke earlier today that went over my head. That one went over your head. No, well, that was way out there, man. Uh, I'm sorry. So Joseph Newgarden, the winner, Scott Dixon finishes second. Will Power, who I thought was going to win, yeah. <laughs> finishes up third. Be and beware, then Scott Dixon. By the way, has not been good at St. Petersburg in recent years, the fact that he started off strong with a runner-up finish ought to make everybody nervous. Uh, Rosenquist fourth, Rossi finished fifth. He was my pick to win. He just didn't quite get there. Uh, not enough speed. Hinchcliffe, pa Pagano from the back of the field. Mm -hmm. uh, Colton Herta, another impressive rookie. And But here's my impressive rookie. Santino Ferrucci, after getting into the wall and qualifying, ends up Starting in the back, finishing ninth. And look, yes. I don't want to make much of one race here. But if if this kid can just get his mental game together, I think he has the chance to shock the world in this series. I think Santino's he, mental game actually was together this weekend on race keep day. It keep together. it together. Yes. Okay. Uh, it, uh, so I said, I don't want to make much of one right. race, but... That was the, the way that we need to see Santino perform every week if he's going to uh, make it in the IndyCar series. And uh, certainly a, a, a fantastic run. Jack Harvey rounding out the top 10 and Spencer yeah. Piggott finishing 11th. in 11th. Uh, so real quick before we go to break, yeah. I want to give a call. You, We talked about Rosenquist already, and he's kind of the star rookie like Robbie Wickens yeah. was a year ago. But I want to give a call to the entire rookie class. Yes. Rosenquist, Colton Herta, Ferrucci all ending up in the top yep. nine, and there should have been a fourth rookie in the top 10 if not for a water pressure issue mid-race. Marcus Erickson was running nice in the job. top eight. Eight, yeah. all race long before the water pressure on his uh, number seven Aero Schmidt Peterson Honda went away. He, you know, this rookie class, I've said, and, and Robin Miller has repeatedly stressed over at Racer.com that this rookie class has the potential to be the most talented rookie class and the most proficient rookie class maybe that IndyCar has ever had. And I feel like they took a big step to proving that. Like you said, I don't want to make much of one race, but for Rosenquist, Herta, Ferrucci, and, and Erickson to have the kind of races that they had really says to me that it's not just going to be all about the veterans this year, and that to me is exciting. It Quick is. call to Ben Hanley and Dragon Speed, too. The longtime sports car team making their very first IndyCar start. They barely got their chassis in time to test a week ago at Sebring, and they came out, qualified, made the second round of qualifying, qualified 12th, and even though he ended up two laps down in 18th, Ben's learning how to drive these cars, and I thought it was good, you know, it was good to see him finish the race just log laps, do what he needed to do. That program has an intention of growing their IndyCar program into a long-term, you know, we're not going anywhere. Yeah. And this was a great start for them. So I just wanted to give them some props. New faces, respectable races at St. Yes, Pete. That's exactly absolutely. what that was. And uh, we step aside when we come back, our lightning round and some ARCA conversation. Stick around. You're listening to the Stock Car Show presented by HMS Motorsport. The leaders in motorsport safety will be right back. When do you think of a plumber? Like most people, even if it's an emergency, you can be confident about who will arrive to help you. For quality and reliability, count on someone you can trust. Call on the plumbing services of Hague Quality Water of Maryland. Plumbing doesn't have to be an emergency. We handle all kinds of preventative maintenance, too. Hague Quality Water of Maryland is family-owned here in Annapolis since 1993. For a refreshing
refreshing choice, call us at 888-84-WATER or visit us online. Here at Lewis Meineke, we're more than just your average car care center. Hey, it's Dave, your neighbor from Lewis Meineke. Whether you need an oil change, brakes, tires, or anything under the hood, we've got you covered. Take advantage of our free check engine light service as well. Yes, free. And don't forget about our free shuttle service. Never stress, we'll take care of the rest. On with life. Give us a call at Lewis Meineke, 302-827-2054. Is your job sucking the life out of you? Wake up. You can do something else. Information technology. I know what you're thinking, but I'm not a math and science person. No problem and no excuses. Because it's not rocket science. It's my computer career. Go to mycomputercareer.edu and take the free career evaluation today. You can start your new life as an IT pro in as little as four months. Mycomputercareer.edu. That's mycomputercareer.edu. Do you love the sound of high revving motors and the smell of burning rubber? Do you want to get your car sideways right at the ragged edge of control? If you've always wanted to try drifting or learn to improve your drifting skills, Summit Point Motorsports Park, the Mid-Atlantic's premier motorsports facility, has the expert instructors and the specialized track to teach you how to drift and the skills necessary to drift competitively. From skid pad to open sessions, Summit Point Motorsports Park has the safe and open environment that allows drifters of all skill levels, new to intermediate, to get sideways and smoking. With a focus on safety and the skill set necessary to drift competitively, Summit Point Motorsports Park's Drift Nirvana is just the thing for you. Call for your reservation today 304-725-8444 or for more information go online summitpoint-raceway.com or you can email them at office at bsrinc.com drift nirvana getting you sideways the right way if you own a gun you have a full-time responsibility when you aren't using it be sure it can't get into the hands of curious children troubled teenagers a thief or anyone else who might misuse it your family, friends, and neighbors are all counting on you. Remember, always lock it up. For more information on firearm storage safety, visit ncpc.org. This message brought to you by the National Crime Prevention Council, the Bureau of Justice Assistance, and the Ad Council. Hi, I'm Cody Connor, and you're listening to Race Chaser Radio. Now back to the show. Welcome back to the Stock Car Show. We're playing the blues here as we head into our lightning round. And uh, we want to talk some ARCA here. And I got to start this segment with uh, a couple of notes here, just quick notes. First of all, Michael Self is is a driver we met, we talked about earlier that never gets to me the respect that he should. I don't know why. Some bigger team or organization has not put this driver in an Xfinity car full time or I mean something, but um, picks up another win. There's note number one. Note number two, Chandler Smith, P4. And I think that this championship comes down to a combination of self and Eckes. And Smith, Eck is third, by the way. Wait, it can't come down to Chandler being. Oh, that's right. He's, he's not running not full enough. time yet. He's that's, not old enough. And you know that's sad because I really think the kid would be a championship contender yeah. if he could run all the races. But um, Michael Self getting a win is is you say it's surprising at 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 five, five flags. flags because he says he's not good on short tracks. Well, I mean, goodness gracious, you know it's. This is a situation coming out of K&M West where we know he had success years ago. And now in the Arca series, he's mainly been running the bigger tracks, but it isn't like he's never won on a short track. I mean, come on. No, but Mike, you know, Michael, I, I say that quoting Michael's own words. He has professed for years that he, you know, his specialty has not been the short tracks. He's felt more comfortable in the Arca car on the speedway. It was on Friday. But, well. And Saturday. <sighs> Yeah, but I mean, in the started same, second one. I know, but in the, in the same vein too, it wasn't necessarily like Michael just flat dominated the race. Well, no, as, of course not. As but, most races in Pensacola do, it came down to 
preserving your tires. Well, and, and again, the experience that this guy has. Mm -hmm. I mean, if, for those who don't know, okay, you look at the, again, we'll go back to the top five again. Yeah. Michael Self's like 28. Yeah. Okay, Ty Gibbs is like 16. 12. <laughs> um, you know, 16 looks 12. Yeah. He's 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 barely a puppy yep. in this Eckes series, is, right? Eckes is 18. Eckes Chandler is 18. Is Chandler is 16. 16 or and Corey yeah. Heim just turned 16. I was going to say, so your entire top five, Michael Self is 12 years older than most of the top five, 10 to 12 years older. Yeah. So this is a seasoned veteran here. He's been a driver coach. He's been... You know, he's been in K&N, he's been in ARCA, he's won in everything he's raised. Mm -hmm. Basically, somebody needs to drop this 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 man into a truck or an Xfinity car. I, yeah. I just think it's I... tragic that he is not doing something higher than ARCA. I know, point. I know, it really is. But I love that at least Sinclair has gotten behind him to give him a chance at a championship. Um, that's a big deal. The driver that I want to talk about that really dominated this race, I know what you're looking at. I'll get to that in a minute. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> but the <laughs> Are you sure you know what I'm yes. looking at? Okay. I know because I did the same thing. <laughs> um, anyway, the guy, the guy who dominated this race that I really want to give a lot of props to because we're going to see him in a couple weeks in a truck at Martinsville is Raphael Lassard, who was in a uh, second KBR development yep. entry over the weekend, led a race-high 80 three laps and was the driver to beat up until the handling on his car finally started to go away with 40 laps to go and and he he fell back as the tires wore out but Rafi was a tremendous part of this race and really I felt like was the driver to beat for about 85 well, percent of it but it's all about management it he, is he led a portion of the race that really didn't matter too much well, and, He'll and learn that, eventually. It, that, to, and that, well, and that you know. wasn't so much that. And, and his team said after the race, it wasn't so much that the t that he, Rafi pushed the tires too hard because the wear was the same as most of the other front runners. It was more the fact that they didn't have the adjustments quite where he needed them to be able to. Well, still, he'll learn that again. To you, run. you don't yep. have to. Um, you only have to lead the last one. Right. I mean, but great showing for him. Um, Solid debut for Connor O'Kresic. I, I wanted. I, I want to give Rafi. him some credit. Out Connor yeah. beat him. No, Connor. Connor, Connor finished seventh. Very, you know, he didn't lead the race, but he gained a lot of respect. Yep. I felt like stayed out of trouble. Did a great job. Of course, he beat Kyle Busch at Speedfest uh, a couple months back to start off the year. Uh, you had Corey Heim, another teenager, as we mentioned a minute ago, who had a really solid debut, top five. Um, and then the driver who led some laps late in the race, and just because he he only had two tires left in the pit area instead of four, was why he finished ninth. But I loved the gamble that Caden Honeycutt took by taking four tires and hoping it would go green all the way. And if not for debris with 42 laps to go, he had the winning strategy if it wasn't for a big piece of debris off the 06 car that uh, ultimate and, and you know the 06 subsequently stopping at the end of pit road right that if not for that Caden Honeycutt has the strategy and probably wins the race in the exact same way that Travis Braden won at Lucas Oil Raceway a couple years ago but since I mentioned the 06 out of Wayne Peterson's stable I will tell you that no, you're not seeing things, nor was Tom <laughs> seeing things. When you look down the final results, yes, there is a second person in the universe by the name of Tim Richmond who was running in this weekend's ARCA race for Wayne Peterson in the number 06 Chevrolet. Now, NASCAR Tim Richmond is from Ohio. This particular Tim Richmond is from Ottawa, Illinois. Close no enough. relation that I know <laughs> of, and for the record, he's only 20, uh, 21 years old, or will will turn 21 years old later this year. So, uh, yeah, one of those, uh, much like Mark Martin or Jeff Gordon, who we know have uh, name doppelgangers that also race in the motorsports spectrum, this was one of those where Just you, the first re I had you seen it really it had to do like, a double hey, take. Really? Um, uh. But uh, no, I, it, it was different. 
it was interesting to say the least, but uh, you know, finished the race, finished 14th, so I give him credit for that. Bummed out for the bad luck for a couple of the young teenagers in the race, though. Sam Mayer with a DNF for fuel pressure problems that I know was not yeah. what he wanted out of GMS, and Carson Hosevar had a fuel pump break in the second KBR development car that uh, was right up there with his teammate Rafael Lassard all race long before that fuel pump went away, and. Uh, I, I believe Hosevar is going to have a lot to say in his limited Arca Racing Series or Arca Menards Series starts. That's the first time I've had to put a dollar in that jar <laughs> this year. Um, but his Arca races later this season, you're going to hear a lot about Carson Hosevar for sure. And Tanner Gray finishing P12. Yeah. Um, solid debut. Solid debut. Um, only 20 cars. That. That I was bummed cars. about. That I was bummed about. And for Arca's first time at Pensacola in 23 years, too, I was hoping for a few more. But, yeah. I mean, in fairness, 20 Arca cars on a half-mile track is not a bad show, especially when you have the quality no, of Arca cars. But, but I wish we could – about five or six more, I think, would have really made that a good show. I think – Better it, show. I think it, was a it good show. makes a statement. And we'll see if the car count trickles up as we get into the season but i think that i think that makes a bit of a statement we'll we'll have to see but uh it, it's a short track so you would have expected more than 20 cars at a short track this early in the year um but uh we'll see um see where that goes i uh, was very interested to see mm -hmm. only 20 cars there at that one um okay so we have um we have about four minutes left here in the show and, and this is the lightning round. So traditionally, we're supposed to argue about something. Traditionally. But there really isn't a whole lot to necessarily argue about, at least for me, coming out of ISM. But I'm still going to go around the table. We've had four races now. We're going to go to California this coming weekend. So Randy Miller, new package. Wait, no. It's the same as Vegas. You didn't let me finish the question. New package through four races. Are you buying, selling, or don't, don't think it really makes that much difference, Shannon? Have we, have we not seen enough data sample? No. All of these quote-unquote cookie-cutter racetracks that we go to at the beginning of the season don't really mean a thing. Wait until we get later in the season when we run Martinsville and Bristol and you know the the, the shorter tracks and, and things like that where you know it's a little bit of a different package. But I, I feel like we need – all of the tracks that we run during the season to be, you know, ran before we really start to see how much of an effect this new package actually has on the cars and the drivers and the standings and all that good stuff. Jacob? We haven't repeated the package until now, so uh, this is the first time we'll repeat the same set at least once this season. Uh, we'll, it'll be the same specs as we ran at Las Vegas. And let me tell you what. <laughs> On a racetrack like Fontana, where you can get five and six wide and spread out and suck up and draft and do all these fun things we're used to seeing, I really look forward to this weekend. Uh, but to answer your original question, not enough sample size. Ask me again when we get to the midway point of the year. For me, I think early, the, the biggest thing I see is it really isn't that big of a thing I see. Um, I mean, the Vegas race was better than last year for sure, but it, it still wasn't a fantastic race. It well, was, well, the, but I think the biggest problem we have is there's still too much downforce. I think the cars are very easy to drive. I don't think they, I, I, I think it's made it, um, yeah, we had, we had some cautions at ISM, but you know, I think California is going to be an interesting race with this package, like Jacob said, because, you know, we're going to be able to get up to speed and we're going to basically see mm. what we're going to see for the rest of the year on the bigger tracks. Yes. Um, I'm just praying that with Gen 7, they realize there are some things that they have to do with taking away as much downforce as possible that this package just doesn't address. So my last point as we get ready to close the show yes. that Matt Weaver 
brought up is uh, part of the problem for those watching on TV in his mind and in my mind too is that the camera shots that they have right now don't do a good job of portraying the actual amount of racing that's going on and I think that's Fair. something that needs to be kept an eye on and thought about going deeper into the season with that we need to throw a checkered flag on this edition of the stock car show thanks to our uh, friends at strutmasters and mycomputercareer.edu and of course HMS Motorsport the leaders in motorsport safety for what they do to make this show possible. For Tom Baker, Chris Murdoch, Randy Miller, I'm Jacob Seelman. Keep it off the wall. And if you're headed to a racetrack, we might just see you there. Have a safe racing weekend. Good, Good night. night. You've been listening to the Stock Car Show on the Performance Motorsports Network. Stay tuned to Performance Motorsports Network for more race talk. For the latest motorsports news, visit racechaseronline.com. The Stock Car Show is a copyrighted production of the Performance Motorsports Network. www.performancemotorsportsnetwork.com. A member of the Scorpion Radio Group Incorporated and may not be rebroadcast, replicated, or saved in any media without the explicit written permission of PMN. Check out our Facebook page or our section on the PMN website. The opinions expressed on this program are those of the host, co-host, and guests, and do not necessarily reflect those of the management and ownership of either the Performance Motorsports Network or Scorpion Radio Group Incorporated, the advertisers, or the marketing partners. Be listening again next week when the Stock Car Show returns on Thursday night at 7 Eastern. Until then, stay tuned for more great motorsports programming on the Performance Motorsports Network.